Hey everybody, welcome to the Think Business Podcast. I'm John Dwoskin, a business coach, speaker, and author. I help companies and people get unstuck so they can grow their businesses and reach their highest potential. Every day, I'm giving you tips, tools, and best practices, or sharing conversations I'm having with business and thought leaders. All episodes will provide you guidance to help you grow your business today. Get ready to get unstuck and grow your business big very big on this episode of the Think Business Podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to this episode of Think Business Live. Um, You know, this week we're having a mental awareness week. I just, I thought it was important with um, everything that's going on with COVID and a lot of the anxiety that um, I'm hearing about, not only from friends and clients and family um, and on the news uh, because of what's going on with COVID. But I also recently um, watched a documentary called The Weight of Gold, which was um, basically about Olympic athletes talking about their struggle with depression and anxiety and suicidal thoughts. And I thought, you know what, I'd love to dedicate a week to, um, to mental health awareness. Uh, and so, and, and just coincidentally, uh, Josh, who, you know, my whole family has known forever, uh, reached out to me and um, it I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to have uh, Josh Schaefer, Eric Levitz, and Brian Sarasky with the um, AZ House in Jerusalem, Israel. So this is, what time is it there, fellas? It is 7, p.m. 7 o'clock. Okay, good, good. It's noon here. I, I appreciate you all being on the show. Uh, the AZ House is for is a, is addiction recovery center. And I, and, and, and I want to talk to you guys about you know, really kind of, um, you know, what the pro- what programs you offer. And then I want to kind of dive a little bit deeper into, you know, what what does addiction look like? So let's let's start and just kind of give people kind of a flavor of the AZ house. What is, tell, tell us, tell us a little bit about it. Um, OK, so uh, the AZ house is a free treatment center. It's a residential treatment center. And it's also a long-term treatment center. Our program is eight months, and it's broken up into two phases. The first phase is what the public or the layman would understand as the intensive inpatient portion. And then the second phase of our program is like a three-quarter house portion. And so for the first two to three months, the guys are in groups. They have a house job. They have a schedule. Uh, they do not have a phone, they do not carry money, they are always supervised, and the goal of that portion of the program is that they work with 12 steps, that they develop a relationship with the recovery community in the house and outside of the house at the meetings that we go to, which is daily, and that they work the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous um, with a sponsor. You know, we don't facilitate, we don't, we don't facilitate that um, we're not really like a, allowed to, so to speak, because of the traditions of Alcoholics Anonymous. We're not an Alcoholics Anonymous house, um, but that's the program. They do work a 12-step program under our roof. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then the second phase of our program, they are given back their phone, able to carry cash, and are to find a job, start working, and once they are able to pay rent, they um, are able to they, they earn extra privileges a curfew that they can stay out at night, overnights, uh, once a month. And ultimately that portion of the program is is designed for them to um, reconnect with the outside world, establish themselves in the community, save money, and uh, learn a balance of their recovery and work life and personal life, and ultimately move out on their own uh, once that balance of eight months is completed, or or a little longer depending um, depending on that. So that's that's in short what we do. Oh, that sounds like um, you know, it, it sounds like you kind of you know strip away a lot of um, distractions. So, from what it sounds like to me, so you can kind of really you know deal with the issues at hand and just kind of evolve your level of consciousness and awareness without without those distractions. Eric is the founder and executive director. You know, what was it that got you to start a Z house in, in, in Israel? Um, so uh, I, I went to the birthright trip uh, in 2015, 16, right during that New Year's Eve. 
and someone offered, I, I extended my trip, visited a treatment center. I was at home, not completely happy in the line of work that I was in and in a very transitional you know, uh, place in my life. I had just under four years of recovery by then, you know, at that time. And so this guy offered me a job. I had already fell in love with Israel. And I said, okay, no problem. I'll take the job. Let me run home and pack my things, and, and I'll see you in a few weeks. And that's ultimately what I did. While I was at that center, um, I became friends with uh, uh, the father of their last resident. And that, that place ended up closing uh, that shortly after I got there. And that, that father um, connected me with a guy named Moshe Zalman. And basically, we sat down at the table, discussed this idea to open up a free treatment center in Jerusalem. And uh, Moshe Zalman said, I'll help you guys do that. And it was it was very quick. It was it was kind of, it was kind of by chance. It was super exciting, and you know we had that conversation. And two months later, we're opening the doors. So that was in September, that was September first, two thousand sixteen. Right. And, that's, yeah, that's great. I mean, it's, I love the story of just you know I I, I don't believe in, in coincidences, and and you know when you're in alignment, a lot of things just kind of you know come along your path. To, to make it work. So I, I, lo I love that story. Um, and so Brian, so you're the co-director, Josh, you're doing some, you're doing operations, but I want to dive into, um, I, I want to dive into um, a, a little bit away from the business and, and want to dive into, you know, um, addiction, right? I want to dive into right now, you know, I'm, I'm hearing so many stories of, you know, during, um, you know, during uh, a, a shelter in place, there was more drinking there, you know, drugs, there seems to be more drugs in general, just going on that I always hear about, you know, what, what, how does somebody know if they're addicted and then it, how do they even recognize that? Let's start there. What, what is, how does someone define addiction? Um, I'll jump in for just a second. I mean, with everything going around and people having to be quarantined and not working and not having jobs, it's going to be very difficult for a lot of people. And we see the mental health statistics are rising. A lot of people are struggling with mental health a lot more. And it, it's going unrecognized because the government is doing so much right now, all the governments everywhere to help with COVID-19, that the mental health issues are kind of getting pushed on the side. And we're seeing a, a big rise in kind of these mental health issues that are not being addressed properly. And I, I think a lot of it does have to come from the isolation factor. I mean, addiction when when you're in active addiction the isolation factor is a huge thing you you really are alone and now putting people with these with these previous mental health issues and you're you're putting them alone they're stuck in their homes or wherever not working and it it does cause people to not be able to cope and a lot of with the mental health issues when you can't cope the easiest way to get out of your own head and to deal with these problems is to drink or to use drugs because it kind of calms things down for them. Now, as far as the, the question you asked, John, was uh, how do you really identify if you have a problem? And th there, that it does a little, it is a little tricky in that area. Uh, first of all, it's, you're going to have to really admit to yourself that you do have a problem by noticing that your life is really unmanageable. I can't go a day. I can't go an hour. I can't go um, five minutes without using drugs or without drinking that's that's a first that's a first clear sign i would say is you, you have you you can't you need it like i don't feel complete without it and i can't live my life without it yeah. that's like a first a first symbol of like yeah i'm i i'm addicted because i'm dependent on this substance in order to to continue my day right. and it, that that's a sign of of that but Brian, what does complete mean? You know, so, you know, I, I, your term was, I don't feel complete. You know, can you define that a little bit more? I mean, as far as like what that means, because I know a lot of people who say, well, you know, I have a drink, at, I, have a, I have a drink at the end of the day, it's how I unwind or, you know, this, that, and the other. I, I, I'm not suggesting they have a problem, but, you know, where's that, where's the line of having versus feeling complete, I guess. Okay, that's a good question. Yeah, having a drink at the end of the day, even people who 
they're smoking a joint at the end of the day. They have their, they're going to work, they're living their lives. They go home at the end of the day. And so, so to relax and wind down, they have, they have a drink, they smoke a joint. Like I personally don't think that's the, the biggest deal. You see those people who's to say, but I don't think that they probably have a problem. Now, when I was saying complete, I'm kind of referring to like, I'm going through the day feeling like something's missing unless I'm taking a drink, unless I have a, a drug inside of me. Uh-huh. I don't feel whole. I don't feel, I feel like there's something missing and I'm, I'm not like, not at my full potential and I, I need it. It's really like I need it in order to continue my day and to feel like full. Cause yeah. We, but, yeah so. All right. No, good. I, I, I hear you. I, I'm glad I, I'm, I, I like that a little bit more detailed description. So now if somebody's listening to this right now, anyone in the think community and is thinking, Oh yeah, maybe, you know, maybe I, maybe there is an issue. I think whether it's what, what, you know, what we're talking about today in business and life, I think asking for help is something that's, that's really, really difficult. You know, I mean, I, I see it as a business coach all the time. So, so Josh, you know, where, where does someone find the strength to say, Hey, like I need help. Um, so I can relate it back to an experience that I was having. So I was living in America and I was already, I had already been to a treatment center and I like had gone to the first treatment center and I knew that I had a problem, but I didn't think I was an addict or an alcoholic because I just like this stigma of like, like the stigma associated with it scared me and I felt like a burden and I was going through this period maybe a few months after my first treatment center and I was so depressed, anxious, isolated that I didn't leave my bed for like 10 days and I was so miserable and like I, it was this internal, I wasn't even, I was like barely using drugs and alcohol at this point, but it was just those feelings combined with like also needing drugs and alcohol and like sleeping a ton and just being so depressed and sad and it was just, it was so miserable. I, I remember I called my family and I was like, I, I need help in some, in some regards. And that was like the most painful phone call ever because I didn't want to admit that I was having problems. And I also didn't want to admit that like I couldn't fix everything on my own. And like the whole idea, a part of an idea of recovery is that you're not alone and that there's a lot of people that are helping you with their own experiences. So, I mean, it took me a lot of time to find the house. Don't get me wrong between that phone call and, and this, but it was the first step of just being like, I need help in some regards. Like it's hard and it comes internally, you know, no one, number one, no one wants to admit defeat. No one wants to admit that there's something best to them that they thought they could control. And it's, it's very humbling and very difficult to admit that you need help. And for people that are struggling, I would say like, I know exactly how you felt. I would say that, both Eric and Brian have known how you felt. I would say every single person living in this house and in the recovery communities have felt the same way. And as much as it is difficult to, to pick up the phone and call someone, it's it feels that much better when you do. Yeah. Well, um, I'm glad you did, and uh, for all of you. And uh, let me let me ask you this. I, I want to talk about um, a little bit the stigma that you're talking about, right? I think um, you know today. You know, I think we live in a world that's much more, you know, open and it just feels like maybe stigmas are less. But, you know, what does the stigma feel like once you're in treatment, once you're once you're kind of feeling, you know, uh, once you've kind of, you know, gone to the point where you're out of your, you know, depression, anxiety and on a clearer road? You know, so what is what does it feel like versus before you ask for help and then after you get help and you're on a road to recovery? Um, for me, I have a very simple answer. It's I'm a proud member, proud and sober member of Alcoholics Anonymous. It's like the best thing that's ever happened to me. And it's it's when you're on the outside, it's scary because it's like you think of drug addicts and alcoholics, people living under a bridge, and then you get on, you get into the program, and you're like, okay, like everyone has felt the same emotions that I felt. And I'm proud to be a member and I'm proud to help people and I'm proud to be part of it. But for people that don't understand, it's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, so let's, let's, I, I want to kind of talk to those people a little bit more, right? So, you know, Eric, maybe you can comment on this, you know, as, as kind of a business owner, how do you, how do you, 
how do you market yourself? How do you get the word out about AZ House so people know that this is, you know, even available to them? I mean, because I think a lot of, I mean, I know I have some family members that have been through treatments. Um, they are still sober today, um, but, you know, they're expensive. And I don't know if a lot of people know about free services like this one. So how do you keep the word out so people, you know, know that they have a place to call? Uh, good question. So um, we have a f we have a few um, initiatives in place and, and systems in place. Obviously, we have a website, we have an Instagram, we have a Facebook page, we have a presence. Uh, we put out YouTube videos. Um, we do, you know, different. Um, we, we have a newsletter, which we're you know constantly trying to you know create this this community and this awareness of our existence within the public. Um, and so we have all of these things in place, but for I I have noticed, or something that I think we, we can all agree on, or notice is someone always knows someone else, and that's how they get our number. Now, I would say about seventy percent of the time, someone someone who knows us refers refers them. Um, the other thing is, there's a, when when we first opened. Um, we didn't have any of these systems in place, and within I would say two weeks, we had seven guys, um, and we pretty much stay at, at a healthy capacity, if not at capacity, which is uh, our maximum capacity is about seventeen people, um, and and we stay full. So um, it, it's a combination of these things. Um, definitely, we would love to have a larger presence and more. Currently, doing different things to reach reach more people. I, I do want to say there. Ironically, you know, our, our statistics are as good as it gets better. Um, and 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 um, we're free. And, and the, the crazy thing is, is that we don't have a waiting list out of the door because the, the irony is, is that there's a there's a bit of skepticism when they hear free, they think cheap, they think goodwill, they think second second rate. And one of the biggest things that I could say is the reason we're so successful, the reason that this house does such a good job is because we're free. That's one of the keys of our entire success is not charging the cameras, not, not putting a dollar sign above our resident's head. There's no conflict of interest in that department. We gen, gen, genuinely want to help people and it shows in our statistics. Um, so you, that's, our, that's our hurdle. Do you, how do you, how do you, do, is it through donors that you stay um, open? Yes, it's 100% um, donations uh, from the public. Yeah, so I'd like to, I'd like to, that's a beautiful thing that um, to the donors and to, to all of you that are doing such great work on a daily basis. You know, I know, um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't drink, I, I don't do drugs, um, but but um, but I have done a bunch of research and and read a bunch. I've read a lot of books, and I I know a lot of people who are in recovery. And one of the things that I that I hear is that when they're in a AA meeting or NA meeting, right, their their ego is at their car doing push-ups, waiting for that person to get out of that meeting to just kind of like, you know, go in. And so I can't imagine, nor do I pretend to um, understand kind of the difficulty of a day-to-day -day, day of somebody who's in recovery. But, but, but with the three of you being in recovery, my question to you is, when you are having those days, how do you get back to center so you can, you know, just kind of get back to your, your groundedness? Brian. All right, um, I'll jump in. So th there's a there's a line that I like. It's like this program, our house, it doesn't doesn't teach any really new concepts. It's teaching things that pretty much most people learned in kindergarten: how to share, not to lie, don't <laughs> steal, don't be mean. Things, basic general principles of life that most people do. Now, as an addict, as an alcoholic. If I don't 
follow those principles and I don't live my life trying to, to do, to act out in the best of those principles to my, to the best I can. My, the only difference between me and, and someone else who's not an addict is my life's on the line. If I start acting out in those ways and lying and stealing and cheating and doing those things, my life is on the line. That's going to eventually lead me back to using and to drinking. And if I go back to using and drinking, uh, most likely I will die. So that's where, that's like the big difference. Like we're not teaching things that won't help everyone. The, the program of AA, which is really what our house is based on, it's not teaching anything that wouldn't be helpful to anyone who, who would do it. It's just that it's so important to us because of how, of how dire the, the circumstances are for us at the moment. Now, if I'm having a bad day and my ego pops up and things like that, because it's going to happen, we're human, no one's perfect. There's going to be days where you're, you're going to be uh, aggravated, you're going to be annoyed, you're not going to be the, the most, what we like to call spiritually fit where things are just going to get to you. And when those days happen, it's really what the program, what we try to teach people is, you know, you got to take a step back from these things. We have to have trust in, in the program, in a, a, a power greater than ourselves. That is like the, that is the essence of the AA program. There is a power greater than us that can restore us to sanity. And we have yeah. to just, just, we know what the right thing is to do. We, we like, we know, we really, we definitely know what the wrong thing is. We don't always know. It's sometimes a gray area. What's, what the right thing is to do. We always know what the wrong thing is to do. So as long as we're not doing the wrong thing, we're trying to do the next right thing. Even in those days where things aren't, you can always come back to center. You, it's really about staying in the moment. These things happen to me. They bothered me, but you know what? Life goes on and I'll, I'll get through it as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love what you're talking about. So yesterday and the day before I had, Yesterday, my therapist on the show, and the day before that, um, a good friend who's a clinical therapist, and um, you know, a lot of what you're talking about, they they mentioned in their own way, but the idea of surrendering, the power of a pause, um, stepping back, um, and, and being spiritually fit, um, and the power of gratitude, which I think kind of you know sums up a lot of that. Josh, any thoughts on that? Um. Yeah, I, it's for me when I'm struggling, just to step back a second, it's like, like I, I, there's certain times I'll wake up in the morning and I'm angry and I'm pissed about something. And, I, and I, like, I've rewired my brain coming into this program, knowing that just because I'm angry right now, I don't need to let it, you know, ruin my whole day. And that's taking a lot of time to get to that point. And sometimes I do let it ruin my whole day. But, you know, when I'm struggling, I, I often, I call my sponsor, I call a friend, I talk with Eric O'Brien, I talk with someone else in the house, you know, I call someone else in recovery. But the thing that's been the, the best thing for me also is helping someone. So if I'm struggling, I go up to the new guy who's, you know, X amount of days sober, you know, and I say, how you doing? And we just talk, you know, it's not like, I'm not trying to solve, you know, his crisis at the moment. I'm just trying to see how he's doing, start a conversation and help them in any way that I can. And, by getting out of myself, I feel a lot better. And in terms of gratitude, our whole program is built on humility and gratitude. And by being grateful and being humble, you just, it's, it's a sense of, it, it ties that back into that sense of giving back. And also that sense of like, you know, like I am so happy and thankful for the opportunities that I have. I don't want to go back to the way that I was living before. So I'm going to keep doing what I was doing. Yeah. I love what you're talking about. And um, and yesterday, uh, my therapist, who was on Dr. Paul K, talked about humility, gratitude, but also with an emphasis of you got to pick up the phone and share and reach out and have that human connection, right? I mean, that that is so important, especially today. I mean, how great is it that we're, you know, I'm in Michigan and you're in Israel and we're sitting here, you know, talking and who knows who will listen to this, who really needs to hear a lot of these words. So um, I, th I think it's great. Um, any thoughts, Eric, on gratitude or anything that's been talked about? Sure, gratitude. Um, gratitude, I think, is like a, our key to happiness. And you know, the whole house um, is built off of this idea of gratitude. Um, I think, look, this will take it right back to the place being free. 
is that I think one of the worst positions that an attitude can or that a, a, an addict can be in is a position of uh, demand or entitlement. And you know when they go into very expensive treatment centers, they need, they need their bed to be perfect, and they need their hot tub to be the right temperature, and they need their their you know their fancy chef to cook them food, all this stuff. But when they walk into our house, it sets the stage for their reality. Generally, it actually is their reality. They walk in with nothing, and so they're kind of put into a position of gratitude. You're here for free. You're here by the grace of somebody else's. Uh, time and the grace of somebody else's dollar and, and and for everything that you have you need to show gratitude gratitude is an action word and I need to act out this gratitude on a daily basis you know me as a and as you know as someone that has a job the way that I show my job gratitude for the job is I do the best job that I can for someone who's starting from the beginning they have a bed the way that they show their gratitude is by making it. There's a lot of people that don't even have a bed to make. So I need to show you that thanks and that gratitude. And you can find a way to show gratitude for everything that you have. And the more you do that, and the farther you are away from ego, and the, and, and and you're in that like a realm of humility. Yeah. yeah. Let's great. I'm sorry. Yeah. Bro. No, no, that was great. I, I love this. You know, remembering all the little things are so important. Um, and, and as we come to an end, though, I do want to talk about the ego a little bit because you guys have all brought it up. It's a very powerful um, piece of all of our personalities. Um, talk about just, I really don't have any specific questions. I want you guys to kind of freeform whatever you think your answer is. But how do people... Um, how do people get past their ego if they need your services and get to you or to any treatment center? By drinking lots of alcohol. Well, no, no, no. I mean, I know that. <laughs> you know, how do they override and say, okay, how do they quiet the ego so they can, you know, rise up a little bit into, you know, where they need to be? I mean, I reiterate my, my answer. A lot of times it takes them drinking a lot of alcohol. No, I see, I see, okay. What I'm, what, uh, of course, the ego pops right back up after they feel better after a couple weeks, but generally, John Barleycorn beats them into a state of submission that they're, they're, they're genuinely like helpless and they're begging for help and tears are coming down their, their, their face. And, and they're, you know, in a perfect world, as, as hard as it is to watch and as sad as, as it is, they walk in broken. There's no ego. Yeah. Um, as for building back up and how to deal with it, then I'm gonna I'll pass it to Brian. Okay. <laughs> Brian. No, just reiterate what Eric said. It's really, it's more difficult. It, it's very the more it's more common that we see people coming in who have lost everything, who are broken, who pretty much have have cut all ties with family, with friends. And really the ego kind of at that point is out of the picture because they're willing to do anything because they really have no other option. Now, on the other hand, there are people who do need the program and do need rehab who haven't lost everything. It, it's more rare, but there are plenty of people who are in this program who when they came in, they still had a job, they still had a family, they still had a car, they weren't in trouble with the law. It does happen. Now, for people like that, it, it's much more difficult to, to put the ego down, put it aside and to say, hey, like I need help. It's really, it, a lot of the time people, they're pushed in by family members who say maybe you need, a, you need help. But for them to truly admit it to themselves, it, 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 takes, a, it takes a big man who still has everything, uh, still can do everything, and still has the job and a family to be like, there still is a problem there. Yeah, and it takes it takes a more, normally people who have that it takes them a lot more years of drinking and using drugs, uh, even if they haven't lost everything before they realize, yo, I, I am having a problem with this. Like I I want to stop, but I can't. Yeah. It's like I I have so much willpower in everything else in my life. I can keep a job. I can do well in my job. I can be successful. Be well in my family. But I want to stop drinking, but I can't then I know, then I must have a problem. So if you can ask yourself the question like, and you want to stop drinking, but you can't do it, then that's probably a clear answer to, hey, like I probably need to get some external help for this. All right, good, well said guys. 
And besides you, besides um, um, uh, AZ House, what are some other resources for people around the world if they need to pick up the phone and call someone, you know, while they're listening to this even? Um, I would, I would say um, there's a. If, if you're asking in regards to like a 12-step program or another treatment. Yeah, generally, I mean, does somebody call Ben Ford? Does somebody, if someone's in Israel, they can call you. If someone's willing to travel to Israel, are there, you know, who? Where do they pick up the phone? And, do they call a therapist? Like, who do they? Where do people go? What's the first step? Um. So. <laughs> I would say, if, so if, if you're in the States and you're looking for some sort of treatment in the States, I would call the Absolute House, the Leah House, the Keating Center, the Lantern, all these places are just like yeah. our Common ground, yeah. right. Yeah. They're just like our house, they're based in Cleveland. Um, yeah. And if being in Israel isn't important to her, you know, the Judaism aspect, if that's not important to you, I would definitely suggest you know, one of those places, especially if you're not trying to travel or the COVID crisis, those are great places. I'm friends with the directors. Yeah. Um, I would look in a phone book and call your local um, AA uh, office, hotline. AA hotline, get to a meeting, you know, search online. Um, there's a lot of different 12-step fellowships. I would um, potentially get with a therapist and ask them for help. Same thing, ask them to put you in touch with you know, ultimately, if you're dealing with drug and alcohol addiction, um, I would say 98% of the time, uh, if you're the one picking up the phone and you're the one who wants the help, get to a 12-step program. That will be your best bet. Uh, before you start throwing away, throwing your money in all these different directions, get to a 12-step meeting. All right, good. Um, good. Great. I appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm going to end with this question. Um, one thing you're grateful for today. I'll go first. Um, All right. I'm grateful for this every day. And that's the AZ House because it changed my life. It's given me purpose and it's ignited a passion inside of me that's given me a ton of meaning, a ton of friends, and like a life beyond my wildest dreams. Great. Um, on top of the beautiful life that I've been given, I'm grateful for brother and judge. Right, good. <laughs> That's very nice. Um, I'm grateful for all of you. I'm grateful for this opportunity. Really, what I'm grateful for today is to piggyback on what we were saying before, is that uh, today I have the ability that I can face my problems and live life on life's terms. I, if the problem does arise in my life, I'm able to face it. I'm able to understand why I'm having this problem, understand why I'm having this feeling, and I don't need a drink or use drugs over it today. Yeah. I love it. Well, I'm grateful that Josh reached out to me and, you know, asked if you guys, there's an opportunity to be on the show because this was a perfect time and uh, I, I, I appreciate it. And, and Josh, it's great to see you doing great. It's great to see you all doing great um, and doing great things and helping a lot of people. So um, just what, just before, as we close, just tell people how they can get a hold of you if they, if they need to. Um, EasyHouseJerusalem.com. Uh, we have a website, we have a Facebook page, we have an Instagram, all of our contact information is there. Um, our email is also azhouse18 at gmail.com. Um, you can really reach us at any time of the day or whatever, I and mean, we're happy to help whoever, whenever. All right. Uh, Josh, Eric, Brian, I can't thank you guys enough. I appreciate uh, you being vulnerable and talking about your own stories and all the great work that you're doing to help so many other people. Um, so thanks for being on the show and thanks for sharing. I really I appreciate it. Thanks guys. Thank you, Jane. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for taking time to listen to the Think Business Podcast. For more information about everything discussed on today's show, my custom one-on-one -on -one or group coaching, or to join my mailing list and get all my Think Big updates, visit johndwaskin.com. Have an amazing day and always, Big.